Okay, so we've got this position function. We're going to be asked about average velocity. Remember, velocity is the derivative of position. And then we're going to talk about what the mean value theorem says about some value in that interval. So we've got this position function. First thing I want to know is, when does it hit the ground? So let's, let's kind of graph this out. We know we're starting at 100. And our graph is negative 16 t squared plus 100. We're just dropping this thing off. Here's t. Here's s. So first thing I'm going to answer, don't even need calculus for this. We're going to figure out when does it hit the ground? What is this? Maybe we'll call this t1 value. Well, that's when the height equals zero. So we just set the height equal to zero. So t squared will be 100 over 16. So a couple things happen. I moved the 100 over, then I divided by negative 16, and my negatives canceled. Take the square root of both sides. I don't need a plus or minus here. I know I'm looking for a positive t value. I get 10 over 4, which is 2.5 seconds. Okay, now let's find the average velocity over that time interval. So I have two points here. I have the point 0, 100 and the point 2.5. That's a point, comma, 0. Average velocity will be final minus initial y value, 0 minus 100. So this is s of 1. T1, T0, and S of T0. We'll call that T1. So final minus initial over final minus initial T. These are my outputs. These are my inputs. I get negative 100 over 2.5. And if I get my calculator out, negative 100 divided by 2.5, negative 40. And my units here, velocity is going, always going to have units of position divided by units of time, feet and seconds. Why is it negative? Because I'm going down. All of my velocities are negative here because I'm going down. Up is the positive direction, down is the negative. Okay. Now, this function, s, is continuous on the interval, the closed interval from 0 to 2.5. It's also differentiable. The derivative exists on the open interval from 0 to 2.5. The derivative does not exist at the endpoints, but we don't care about that. That's it. So because we meet the conditions, the mean value theorem says there exists doesn't tell us where it is, but there exists a C in the open interval from 0 to 2.5, such that S prime of C, which S prime, that's just the velocity, is equal to the average rate of change, which we just found negative 40 feet per second. So, this is what the mean value theorem says. This is the best way to think of it. I dropped 100 feet in two and a half seconds. So just think if you're driving from here to Tampa, you make the drive in two hours, it's 100 miles, you averaged 50 miles an hour. That doesn't mean you're going 50 miles an hour the whole time. That's your average, your distance divided by your time. 
That's what we found here, an average velocity. Mean value theorem says there's some point in that interval when you're going exactly that value. There is some moment when this rock was dropping when it was going exactly 40 meters per second down, or 40 feet per second. See, it starts off at zero. The velocity at the initial time is zero because we just now let go. And when we hit the ground, it's going a lot faster than 40. But someplace in here, it was going exactly 40 down feet per second. 